Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink with a couple of birthday cards using some brand new waffle flower products. In particular, the Sketched Daffodil. Uh, there's a stamp set, coordinating wafer die, a stencil set, and a hot foil plate, all of which I used today. I just there's some one in large florals. Again, if you've watched my videos, you guys know. And usually it's like clusters, but this is just a big image. And I started with the hot foil plate. You could totally skip the hot foiling if that's not your thing. The stamp set is the exact, like the image like this from the stamp set. It's the exact same size. So you could stamp the image or like heat embossing gold. Get a similar look. Not quite the same. You know, hot foil is unique. But... I went with hot foil plate because I'm just I'm loving it. Live. And now that, you know, I've been just getting it to work for me, I'm using my Glimmer hot foil machine. The biggest game changer, as silly as it sounds, is I just use that little narrow spellbinders tape and I tape down the foil to my cardstock and then I tape the uh, hot foil plate to that just to hold everything in place. And for whatever magical reason, it just, it works. So... I had heated up my Glimmer hot foil machine. Um, I had turned it on, waited till the light went green, and then I'm using gold Glimmer foil and just Simon Says Stamps smooth white cardstock and tape the foil, put the with the foil with the pretty side up, and then the plate with the pretty side of the plate facing the pretty side of the foil. Then I stick it on the mach on the Glimmer hot foil machine. You press the button. The timer it takes about a minute to, you know, distribute the heat. And then I run it through my Spellbinders Platinum 6 machine, just like so, and then remove the plate and the foil. And I've just, oh, love, love. <laughs> it really, really appeals to my inner magpie, the the shininess of it all. And I did actually re uh, reverse foil the, like, the leftover pieces, but I'm not going to include that in the video because I did end up using them. I'm just going to save them for a future project. But... Um, these pieces of cardstock are A2 size, so four and a quarter by five and a half to give you an idea of how big this image is. Like it's just, it's a nice, it's a nice size. So after I'd foiled it, I pulled out the coordinating stencils and I, I was pointing out here, like it has, there's some numbers that are on the stencil and it actually even says like what inks you can use, like a light yellow, uh, a medium orange, etc. And at first I was like, okay, you know, I I just, I it didn't click until I started like actually using the stencil. But I was like, wow, like they're, they're really just making life easy for all of us, you know, <laughs> including the colors. I was even using the stencil until I used it and started filling in the image, it didn't hit me. I was just assuming this was like all the other stencils that have been on the market, um, you know, that we can stamp our images or hot foil or whatever, and then use the stencils. And instead of coloring, you just use the stencils and they fill it in. This one is different. It doesn't fill in solid areas of the image. It there's there's purposeful gaps and things to create little like highlights and details. And yeah, once my brain caught up with everything else, I was like, oh, that's why there was little guides like what colors to use to to best um enhance and make these little elements come together. So I hadn't quite figured it out yet. I was just I was just doing my thing. I'm using my little waffle flower stencil mat just, you know, to keep things from slipping all over the place and using it to hold my ink pads too. And I was using some waffle flower blending brushes, but also their little blending brushes, the um shader one brushes. In fact, you could do the this entire image. You don't even need the bigger brushes. The shader ones are like just the perfect size and it just worked um because yeah I'd grab the bigger ones because it just in my head I was like oh I'm just gonna like not have to color it can use the stencil fill it in um still didn't have to color the stencil doesn't like fully fill it in I oh, the, this is where it's starting to kind of come together because I was like oh the the layer for the the light yellow that I used and I was like oh there's some detail you know and I noticed it on the greenery too but it was just it still wasn't like fully coming together it was when I pulled out this like used the second stencil because there's, there's only the two and it's got the different little sections for the greenery parts 
for the main flower, for the center, etc. And I was just somewhat loosely following the little guides on the stencil f as far as colors went. Um, and yeah, I was using Simon's positively saturated inks for all of this. And I'll have links to all the colors I used, but I just picked out like basically a light and a medium um, of the yellow. So I used lemonade and citrine and then a medium and a dark of the oranges. So grapefruit and mandarin. And then for my greens, it was a light and a dark. So celery and perfection. And this was the sense, it was the second stencil that it all started like coming together. <laughs> Sometimes it just takes me a bit to understand what I'm doing <laughs> or what was like the plan, you know, behind certain products. And then I'm just like, I always sit back and I'm like, oh, they're just, they're geniuses because I would never think of things like this. So anyway, with the second stencil, I'm going with the darker colors, which is also, it's on the second stencil. It says, um... That it's got numbers and then there's a number on each little section again it's all done for you i love it i love it because again I'm, I'm i can be a little bit mm, takes me a while so this yeah it was when i did this i started realizing like oh okay i get it now it's kind of like one of those things like with certain projects or certain things where i tell you guys it's like once you do it once you know once you put together something once once you um fully stamped numbers whatever it is like you do you know you do it that one time and it just makes sense that's what I did here like I had to finish now the whole image w rather than jumping back and forth between the two it was like finish the whole thing start to finish here with this second stencil so I could just see it and it was like okay now it all makes sense love it like love the bits of detail rather than just solid fill in I don't know I just I was blown away by this I could keep going on about it but I know I'm being kind of ridiculous so the other option is to simply just color this in you know skip the stencils color it in it would look fabulous too that was one of the other ideas I'd had I ran out of time make it I just I had too many ideas not enough time which is the story of my life but another option I had planned on doing was I was going to hot foil this onto some watercolor paper and then just do a simple watercoloring because this is the type of image that it would be very easy you know um or you and I get you could skip the hot foil you could just stamp it like see look at it look at it look at the just the details I love it anyway you could skip the hot foiling stamp the image and color it it's these that's why I love big florals you can just I don't know. I find them freeing in a sense. I don't have to think too much. And, you know, the detail is there. The image is there. Everything is just, you just fill it in. So after I was done all of the stenciling, I used the coordinating wafer die and die cut them. And then I grabbed a scrap of black cardstock and I used my anti-static powder tool on it. And I inked up the, there's a uh, happy birthday sentiment in that uh, sketched daffodil stamp set. And I stamped the birthday script word onto this black card stock and I did that twice. And then I coated it with Simon's Detail White embossing powder. And then I'm going to melt this with my heat tool. And then I'm going to do very simple fussy cutting. There's, because there's only a coordinating wafer die for like the big main image. Um, a sentiment like this, you could also just cut it as a sentiment strip, you know, or die cut it with a sentiment label wafer die. That would work too, just the because the size and the the way this sentiment is, it would be very simple. I just decided to do quick, simple fussy cutting, just kind of following along. Um, yeah, you see me, I move my cardstock more than the actual scissors. And like I said, I, I will always, I will always go for the wafer die if there's a coordinating wafer die, but if there's not. I will fussy cut it and if it's complicated then I will just cut a rectangle around it with my paper cutter you know but this was quick and simple so I did that with the birthday word and then the happy word which is separate I stamped that onto just a scrap of white cardstock with the grapefruit ink and that I did die cut with um a sentiment label wafer for dye but you could use your paper trimmer like same thing so die cut those set those aside now to make these into vellum cards, um, I'm sure all of you have watched, and if you haven't, go over and watch. Uh, Jennifer McGuire's done a couple videos lately. Well, no, she did one recently and then one, I think it was in the fall of last year, uh, doing like different techniques with vellum. And they're all fabulous, but it was the vellum cards, like 
actual card base, bases made directly from vellum that kind of stuck with me. And I started at, like thinking to myself and I was like, have I ever actually made a vellum card? Like I use vellum all the time, all the time. I have like a stack of it. I love vellum, but I don't think I've ever actually made a card from it. So um, thanks to her, I was, it was like in the forefront of my mind. And I was like, you know what? These cards would look really cute as vellum. So I took a full sheet of vellum and it helps to have a good like heavyweight vellum for this. And I use um, Simon Says Stamps vellum. And I, that, I took that and a piece of Simon's sea glass cardstock and I scored them in half. So at five and a half inches, folded over and then I cut them in half again. So I have two top folding A2 cards, two made out of vellum, two made out of C, the sea glass cardstock. Now the cardstock I am trimming down because I don't want it to be the full size. I want it to be just sort of a mini card that's going to go inside the vellum card. So these I trimmed down to three and a half by four and three quarters. Yeah. So that'll give a place to write something to the recipient. It'll sort of frame the daffodil on the front because you'll see through it through the vellum. That's why I went with the sea glass versus I was going to do white, but then I'm like, ooh, a, you know, a nice light aqua will be perfect and just adds a little bit more color, but it's just it's neutral enough that it's not going to like distract from everything else. So to adhere these to the vellum, I'm using score tape. Personally, I will not or I will try to avoid using liquid adhesive on vellum because for me, it just it curls like a, a little bit of liquid adhesive. Not a big deal, but I've shown in other videos how badly it curls for me. And this stuff is heavyweight vellum, but it I if I can avoid using liquid adhesive, I will. So I put score tape on the back of the mini card, put that on the inside of the vellum card and then I had cut a panel to the same size so three and a half by four and three quarters and put uh, the score tape on that as well and this is going on the very back of the card this just covers up the adhesive because you can see it through the vellum it doesn't look pretty so that covers it up plus that gives a spot to stamp you know your hand stamp by etc you could also just put a panel on the inside it doesn't have to be a little folded card I just thought that was a cute little extra so I've got that adhered and then to adhere the daffodil, same thing. I don't want to use liquid adhesive because I was, I was liter literally like liquid adhesive would be faster, but knowing my luck, it would probably just curl and then just be, just not look nice at all. So I put score tape on the back of the hot foiled uh, daffodil. Doesn't need to be completely covered and editing me here. Um, another option, which would have been just so quick and easy, run it through my Xyron machine could have done that like could have run it through and then die cut it and then just stuck it there and probably wouldn't need to do this step I die cut another daffodil just from a scrap of white cardstock put adhesive on the front of that one and then I'm going to stick this on the back side of the vellum on the inside of the card there so that again it just covers up the adhesive and makes everything look you know a little cleaner just a little bit a little more posh you know um but yeah could have used my Xyron for that. So there's there's an option. As always, like I think of these things way after the fact. <laughs> but still, didn't take too long. So adhered those, the daffodil on the front, the plain die cut on the inside, the sentiments I adhered right on top on the front of the card again, which is little bits of the score tape. And then there's two individual little daffodil images in the stamp set. And I stuck those on acrylic blocks and stamped them on the inside of the card with uh, Simon's Surf Positively Saturated Ink, just to give that inside a little something because I just, it can't be naked, you know? And then as a last little embellishment, I pulled out these enamel dots, these waffle flower ones. I've been hoarding these forever. I can't help myself. But I was like, ooh, these would be really cute. You know, again, adds, it's kind of an, a little nod to me adding bling and me skipping adding splatter and that sort of a thing. Cause I know, um, but yeah, so I've got a little bit of enamel bling and then the hot foiling vellum note card. These were fun. They're just, they're cute. And I just, I love, I love this daffodil and I love the hot foil plate and the stencil just, that was, that was a pleasant little surprise. I just, it's funny sometimes how my, I just don't see it. Like the product is sitting right in front of me and I didn't see it until I started using it. <laughs> so anywho, hope you guys enjoyed this. 
Um, this actually, this video is also part of a big blog hop for this release. I will have all that info in my blog post, which will be linked directly below the video. Highly recommend. There's giveaways and inspiration and all the fun things. So I will have that linked directly below along with a supply list and a link to all the supplies I used. So you can check that out below if you are interested. And of course, thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my videos, for thumbs upping, commenting, subscribe if you haven't. And I will see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.